I'm Greg Grunberg, and I'm on the road to capture the stories of amazing families living with rare epilepsy. These are stories of love, perseverance, and hope. Today, my son is living well with epilepsy, but I know firsthand what it's like to be a caregiver to a child with a rare seizure disorder. These families have been through the unthinkable, and they're here to talk about it, laugh about it, hug about it. And I'm here to take care of them. This is The Caregiver. I'm glad you decided to join us for this episode of The Caregiver. John, like myself, is a huge car buff, so we wanted to really put him in his element today as we dive deeper into his family's story. Follow me. This place is cool. How much oh, of a car guy are you is this? <laughs> this is ridiculous. Well, by the way, <laughs> this is all ours today, like a buffet. You can look at these, but you got to feel it. I'm ready. <laughs> Beautiful. It's amazing. Are you a convertible guy? I, I love convertibles. I, I used to have one. It's so fun to drive. What would you say that like you and Cam bond over? Just being able to actually have a, a, a human connection with someone who um, you can have safe conversations with. The real bonding that I think he and I have happens in those kind of conversations where he's like being sincere and asking me something that, um, you know, like the other day he said, how, how can I get girls to like me? And I, like, I almost lost, you know, I was like, well, I was I just about to, to ask so you the thoughtful. same question. So yeah, yeah uh, no, I don't know the answer. When I turned that engine on, I, I, I saw <laughs> you got a big smile on your face like I did. Yeah. Did we just become best friends? <laughs> yeah. I, I want to dig deep. I want to know more. Let's go sit. Do you feel that? I do. This is called, this is called me time, okay? <laughs> you deserve this. Once in a while, you gotta just stop and go, I'm doing a good job. <laughs> you know what I mean? As a dad, like we don't get that. We really don't. That's what this whole thing is kind of about for me, is just like meeting other people that are doing it right. How, how did we get here? Oh, I'm, try, I'm trying to do it right. You know, I'm doing the best I can, I suppose. Uh, yeah. But I, I actually don't know how we got here now that you mention it. Well, this, but we this are is a little here. bit of a surprise for yeah. you. Um, how did this whole thing start? For me, the understanding of what epilepsy is kind of began at the same time it was happening to Cam for the first time. And meaning, um, you know, in the room with his neurologists, hearing from them that, you know, he has been diagnosed with epilepsy. And prior to that moment, I had done almost no research on this. So you were like me, like we, we, we had no family history. We had, we had really no knowledge of epilepsy other than, you know, and I'm sure you hear this from people all the time. They're like, oh yeah, when I was in elementary school, a kid next to me yeah. had a seizure. Like you hear that stuff. We didn't even know that Jake was having episodes um, because he wasn't having the big seizures that everybody knows. He was having staring spells. I don't know if Cam mm -hmm. was having those at yep, the beginning. Yeah, same thing. I think it was about three when he, he first started having these staring spells. And he would just kind of uh, stare at his trains. He had a little train table and mm -hmm. like a lot of toddlers do, he kind of would you know go up to it and stand there. But we would notice him very fixated on some of You're these like, he's trains. He's really into this train. Would, no, and it, we would joke about it. You uh, know, yeah, we were exactly. like, this kid, like he is intensely focused on these trains. When you first think about getting a diagnosis, you don't think it's necessarily a great thing. But in this case, going through all of the unknowns, when, when Cam got the diagnosis, that must have been something that was at least a positive step to yeah. this is where we're going to target it now, right? Yeah, there was a, a real sense of relief there in terms of at least having um, some semblance of understanding what this is, you know, and what, what uh, the options actually look like in terms of treating this. And, uh, you know, it's, it, it, you said it perfectly, and it never feels great to be diagnosed with something or to find out a, a diagnosis. But uh, in this case, you know, it happened to open some doors for some alternative, um, you know, uh, options in terms of how we were viewing, viewing this and approaching this with uh, regard to his care. What is Cam's diagnosis called? He was diagnosed with what's called Lennox-Gastaut syndrome, or LGS. I'm the oldest of five kids, so I had minivans, you know, that I inherited from <laughs> my parents. When did you guys discover Epidiolex and then, and, because and, the whole CBD journey, like that is something that I can imagine th there's a stigma attached to it. So at first where people, when you tell people about it, are they like, what are you doing? What are you talking about? Like, did doctors accept it right away? Were you, were you looking at CBD before you actually, you know, were, were, uh, had the ability yeah. to, to have a real 
medication? Well, at this point, you know, we had been through six different uh, anti-seizure medications. Um, some helped a little bit, some, some didn't, some just had a lot of you know, very difficult side effects to deal with. We're kind of at a point in our lives where um, we're willing to, to try, you know, anything, literally anything. I, w I probably would have tried just about anything yeah. at this point. And, um, you know, it's, I, I'd been reading a little bit about um, uh, cannabinoids and CBD as a so, sort of thing that some people were experimenting with. And uh, I, I saw a documentary uh, about it and, you know, with some kids who were involved uh, with this um, uh, as medicine for the first time. And, you know, we had just put Cam on his third um, medication, um, it, concurrent medication. So meaning he had tried and failed three before, he was on two, then we added another one to the mix when he started having these other seizures and mm -hmm. terrible side effects. He's miserable um, and just lethargic, can't hold a conversation at all, can't read, can't write, like all, I mean, it was, it was very, very, very difficult. At that point, him. you've got to keep you searching. have to keep trying, you know, and and I, I didn't expect even this to work, right? Because you've once you fail so many things that, um, you know, you, you kind of are resigned to the fact that, you know, I'm just going to be strong. I'm going to keep exploring every option, new neurologist, uh, new, new uh, diet, new X, Y, and Z. But uh, I, I was really fortunate in that I'd, I'd sort of decided that I was going to do this. I was uh, ready to buy the equipment. I knew where I was going to uh, source everything that I needed to do this. And because Cameron had just started another medication at the time, I thought, you know, what's it going to hurt uh, to tell his neurologist? In fact, I need to tell his neurologist because he takes other medication. Yeah. I was very sincere with him. I said, I'm, I'm going to do it in my basement. And he's like, wait, he's like, how are you going to do it? I know exactly how I'm going to do it. And he goes, well, you know, let me see if I can save you some jail time. And he uh, he said, there's this uh, trial. He goes, I'm not sure if I'll be able to get Cam into it. And he goes, just promise me you'll wait 30 days because that's how long it might take me to get him into this trial. Ultimately, that's how we um, uh, uh, first gave CBD oil to Cameron was through um, Epidiolex's FDA trial. So how long after that did you see results and was this uh, eye-opening and enlightening to that neurologist? Within two weeks, we had noticed a significant reduction in his seizures and they continued to improve over time until here we are today. It's so awesome. What's interesting is being in the epilepsy community, being so, so vocal, being an advocate, I hear from people all the time. They're like, what about CBD? What, what about? And I tell everybody, you just said it. You have to do this under a doctor's care. When Cam first started taking epidolics, were there any side effects? Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, when he first started taking it, literally in the first couple of days, um, we noticed he was fairly lethargic and not really himself in that sense. So uh, we took him to the doctor and uh, they checked his liver enzymes uh, through blood work and found that they were elevated. So this led to him uh, being in the hospital for a couple of days under uh, supervision and observation and uh, very quickly returned to uh, his usual self. But um, you know, we still monitor the, all of this, those things today. So I'm so excited to hear about how Cam's doing now. I know he's doing great. I want to tell you more about Jake, but I'm sorry. I'd be remiss if I didn't tell you that I'm so excited to take this convertible out. Let's do it. Let's go. Let's go. I loved everything about this. The cars, the conversation. John and so many other families can relate, wanting to be the best they possibly can for their children, especially when LGS and other rare forms of epilepsy are in the picture. For me, as a dad and a caregiver, I'm reminded of just how hard it can be, but also how you never give up. I am so inspired by how John has become the rock for his family, but also how he's never taken any credit for it. Tune in next time for more conversations, the connections, those cars. There is so much to come. Wait until you see what's next. We're just getting started. Important safety information and indications. What is the most important information I should know about Epidiolex Cannabidiol? Do not take if you are allergic to cannabidiol or any of the ingredients in Epidiolex. Epidiolex may cause liver problems. Your doctor may order blood tests to check your liver before you start taking Epidiolex and during treatment. In some cases, Epidiolex treatment may need to be stopped. Call your doctor right away if you start to have any of these signs and symptoms of liver problems during treatment with Epidiolex. Loss of appetite, nausea, vomiting. 
fever, feeling unwell, unusual tiredness, yellowing of the skin or the whites of the eyes, jaundice, itching, unusual darkening of the urine, right upper stomach area pain or discomfort. Epidiolex may cause you to feel sleepy, which may get better over time. Other medicines, for example, clobazam or alcohol, may increase sleepiness. Do not drive, operate heavy machinery, or do other dangerous activities until you know how Epidiolex affects you. Like other anti-epileptic drugs, Epidiolex may cause suicidal thoughts or actions in a very small number of people, about 1 in 500. Call a healthcare provider right away if you have any signs of depression or anxiety, thoughts about suicide or self-harm, feelings of agitation or restlessness, aggression, irritability, or other unusual changes in behavior or mood, especially if they are new, worse, or worry you. Take Epidiolex exactly as your healthcare provider tells you. Do not stop taking Epidiolex without first talking to your healthcare provider. Stopping a seizure medicine suddenly can cause serious problems. What else should I know when taking Epidiolex? The most common side effects of Epidiolex include increase in liver enzymes, sleepiness, decreased appetite, diarrhea, fever, vomiting, feeling very tired and weak, rash, sleep problems, and infections. Epidiolex may affect the way other medicines work, and other medicines may affect how Epidiolex works. Do not start or stop other medicines without talking to your healthcare provider. Tell healthcare providers about all the medicines you take, including prescription and over-the-counter medicines, vitamins, herbal supplements, and cannabis-based products. What additional information applies to women? If you are pregnant or plan to become pregnant, Epidiolex may harm your unborn baby. You and your healthcare provider will have to decide if you should take Epidiolex while you are pregnant. If you become pregnant while taking Epidiolex, talk to your healthcare provider about registering with the North American Anti-Epileptic Drug Pregnancy Registry by calling 1-888-233-2334. The purpose of this registry is to collect information about the safety of anti-epileptic medicines during pregnancy. Because many medicines like Epidiolex are passed into breast milk, talk to your healthcare provider about the best way to feed your baby while taking Epidiolex. What is Epidiolex? Cannabidiol. Epidiolex is a prescription medicine that is used to treat seizures associated with Lennox-Gastaut syndrome, Dravet syndrome, or tuberous sclerosis complex in patients one year of age and older. It is not known if Epidiolex is safe and effective in children under one year of age. Please refer to the Epidiolex medication guide and instructions for use for additional important information. You are encouraged to report side effects of prescription drugs to the FDA. Visit www.fda.gov forward slash MedWatch or call 1-800-FDA-1088. You may also contact Jazz Pharmaceuticals at 1-833-424-6724.